going on everybody? My name is Johnny Bandon and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Trebit Technologies. In today's video, we're going to finish up Domain 1.4, going over cryptography concepts, technologies, by going over cryptographic tools. So this is kind of just tying all the little bits of pieces of hardware, stuff like tokenization together, to finally cap off Domain 1.4. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started and let me get my face out of here. So we're going to start off by talking about TPMs or Trusted Platform Modules. So trusted TPMs securely store encryption keys, digital certificates, passwords, and data, and is typically used for hardware-based authentication. So a TPM can authenticate hardware devices, ensuring that unauthorized devices cannot access secure data. It also performs, and it's really its main purpose, is integrity checks. So it performs integrity checks of the boot process, to detect that the system has been tampered with, i.e. like root kits or boot kits have been installed. So this is kind of how we do secure boot, right? We can have TPMs on there that go through or trusted platform module chips that sit on our motherboard that get hashes of all of our OEM, our original equipment manufacturer uh, hardware on our motherboard. And then once it has that original hash, that secure, the one that has integrity, Every time it boots up, it can take another hash, and if those hashes are different, then we know it's not secure, and we won't actually boot up. So applications, right? It helps us in what's called uh, UEFI, that's like, or EUFI, Extended Unified uh, Integrity. If, I forget what the actual acronym is, but essentially secure boot, right? Then we have hardware security modules, so or an HSM. This is a physical device that provides secure generation, storage and management of cryptographic keys. So this is gonna be a dedicated server or appliance that does the compute and storage of our cryptographic keys and kind of takes that computational uh, load on all the cryptography we could be doing in our environment. So this is widely used in data centers and enterprises for managing TLS keys. It's used in banking and financial services for secure transactions. Just that dedicated compute resource and storage resource for our encryption. So you can see here, this probably sits on a motherboard where there's like a plug-in, right? Maybe to a racked uh, uh, server or maybe to an actual like appliance. And then this is just an actual HSM server right here. Then we have key management systems or KMSs. So this is just a software-based uh, solution that helps us manage our keys and our enterprises. Then we have secure enclave. So a secure enclave is a dedicated chip and a device like a smartphone or computer that provides advanced security features mainly by isolating sensitive operations from the rest of the device. So applications, it is commonly found in modern smartphones and tablets for securing biometric authentication and mobile payment confirmation. All right, moving on to a concept called obfuscation. I always probably mispronounce that, but this involves the practice of making something difficult to understand or interpret. So this is often used to protect software code from reverse engineering or tampering. This could be as simple as just using weird variable names, right? Uh, the purpose is to protect intellectual property. Uh, it's hard to, <laughs> this doesn't prevent unauthorized access, but what it does is it does safeguard sensitive information. I'll probably change that up in my slide, um, but essentially helps you hide your code, okay? So steganography, this is another form of obfuscation. So steganography is the practice of hiding messages or information within non-secret text or data. So unlike en encryption, which obscures the content of a message, steganography conceals the fact that a message is being sent at all. So steganography is used for covert communication. Uh, one appliance or application you can use if you want to get into steganography is something called Veracrypt. Open source, online, for you to download, where you can kind of get into hiding files within files, right? Which is kind of a form of steganography. And the last, one of the last things we're going to talk about is tokenization. So this is the process of substituting a sensitive data element with a non-sensitive equivalent, known as a token, that has no exploitable meaning or value. So you see this a lot, a lot in the payment card industry. Your Google Pay, your Apple Pay, uses tokenization, where essentially your bank has a token that equals your unique identifier that gets changed each time you use your Apple Pay or Google Pay. 
And that helps us be secure and not actually leave credit card information on our actual smartphones, right? So tokenization, another way we can protect databases information without just encryption, right? The last thing we're talking about is data masking. So we have two types. We have static and dynamic. So static data masking, this is done on a copy of the data and is irreversible. The mass data is used in non-production environments. Then we have dynamic data masking. The data is masked in real time as it is requested from the database. The actual data is not altered. Instead, it is masked when displayed to unauthorized users. So the purpose, data masking is used to protect sensitive data while still allowing functional use of databases for deployment, testing, or business analytics. So it just kind of protects us from unauthorized access, right? We can mask the data while still using it and not exposing it to unauthorized users. All right, so this last video, nice and quick. What we're gonna do now again is go over our questions. We actually have six in this uh, little quiz. That's because we went over very specific things, right? So we kind of want to touch on them again. So I'm going to pause our video here. And when we return, I'm going to be going over our practice questions. All right. So now let's go over our practice exam questions for domain 1.4 cryptographic tools. So if you do purchase our self-paced or come to our live virtual training, you get access to practice exam software. It's mobile, very mobile friendly, and it's has over a thousand practice questions to help prep you for the exam. And as of this recording, we don't have our mobile app, it's January 9th, but sometime in my, like May or June, we'll have deployed a mobile app where you can also do the practice questions. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna read the question, I'm gonna have you pause the video, and then I'm gonna answer it, and then we'll see the explanation down below. So question one, what is a key management system? So that is going to be D, or excuse me, I meant to say C, <laughs> a system for managing, storing, and protecting cryptographic keys. Uh, D is like not a specific key management system. That's like a password repository, all right? Sorry. Uh, so it's going to be C, a system for managing, storing, and protecting cryptographic keys. So it's kind of cool. I usually do one incorrect answer per quiz. So, uh, we can just get it out of the way now. You can see that if you do answer incorrectly, it'll give you the correct answer and explanation below. Question two, what is steganography? It's not the study of ancient language. It's not a method for compressing data files. And it's not a type of virus that steals data. It is B, the practice of hiding a secret message within a non-secret object or file. Question three, what is the primary function of a hardware security module? We're going to go with B, to provide physical storage for digital keys and perform cryptographic operations. And that's what it is. It's physical. And you'll actually see cloud-based ASNMs as well. So if you're doing a lot of cloud-based uh, compute functions, you can actually also rent an HSM from the cloud. So pretty cool. Question four, what is tokenization in terms of data security? So D, a method of token distribution in a blockchain network. C, a process of creating a digital currency. B, the use of tokens to gain access to a network. All those do not describe tokenization at all when it comes to data security. So I'm going to go with A, the process of converting data into tokens that retain all the essential information without compromising its security. Question five, what is a secure enclave? So a, a type of antivirus software. B, a private network within an organization. C, a dedicated hardware-based security feature for storing and processing sensitive data. Or D, a secure physical location for server storage. Kind of stuck between C and D, but a secure enclave is uh, it's hardware-based, okay? And this is for uh, sensitive data, not just for server storage, okay? So C, a dedicated hardware-based security feature for storing and processing sensitive data. And last but not least, question six. What is a trusted platform module? So this is going to be a dedicated microprocessor designed to secure hardware by integrating cryptographic keys. Awesome. So now, let's, I've never, this is the first time doing this. We can actually review results as well. Um, I should probably be showing that in my videos, right? All right, guys. So that's going to be it for Domain 1.4. We're now finished. If you're watching these videos in order, Take a deep breath. We're done now. So I want to thank you all for viewing. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and of course, share. 
And if you're an active duty National Guard or a reserve soldier, click that link in the description below to find out how you can use your four grand a year in credentialing assistance to get certified. We're a vendor on the CA program and it's an awesome program where you can get free certification training, free vouchers, free eBooks, and with us, free access to our learning management system, which you get for a lifetime. So I wanna thank you for viewing and stay tuned for our next videos where we jump into domain two of the SY0 slash dash 701 exam.